and here we have the start of the browning of the ground beef mince whatever you want to call it this is packet one of eight here we go with the next stage of the canning of the ground beef now <clears throat> Canning has to be very, very hygienic. You have to make sure everything's clean. So I have had the jars in the dishwasher, but because it's so cold here and I'm talking, the jars are actually sitting in boiling water in the pressure canner just now to keep them hot, keep them clean. Um, mince has just been done. So now I'm about to go and fill up the jars with mince. Lids are in the pot in boiling water. The rings are here. So wish me luck. And if you are thinking of doing something like this, please ensure you have everything you think you are going to need to hand because I use um, white vinegar to clean the rims of the jars before I seal them and I could not find my white vinegar, I don't know where it's gone, so I had to run upstairs and get some more. And you don't really want to be doing that, you know, when you've got the mince in the jars. Now, from all the videos I've seen, um, which is, I have to say, mainly Rose Red Homestead, who I watch do canning, um, there is a thing about making sure that the stuff's tapped down. So I has a wooden spoon and I'll just tap it down because you don't want space in this. There's no point in pressure canning air. So we'll tap that down a bit, just leave that there. Get my cardigan out the drawer. Now this um, bowl has three kilos of mince in it. So yeah, we've done quite a lot of browning of mince this morning. Right, now the you need to leave an inch of head space in these jars so seeing as how that's like up at the top now but I haven't patted it down thinking that should be roughly what I need I don't have a measuring thing so I'm just going to err on the side of caution so that's one I will come back to you momentarily. We're just <coughs> getting the last jar now. So we'll get this filled. Um, I am just short of enough of the meat for the four jars. So I have browned off another 500 grams. And whatever's left in the bowl will just get used for the batch cooking with the rest that I intend doing. So again we'll pat that down while it's still at the beginning because we don't want to waste any space. Gaps are the enemy. Again as I say I'm just going to Pop this pretty much up to the top. And then once I pass it down, that should give me approximately the absolute headroom that I need. And why I'm doing this with a funnel is I'm trying to keep the rims as clean as possible, although I will be putting vinegar on them as well, but just in case. So That is, we now have one, two, I think this could do with a bit more. Just a little bit. One, two, three, four. Now, what we're going to do while I have more boiling water is just want to make some beef broth just to top up the jars. I have used 
stop, but I just want to. There we go. Top these up. Oh my goodness, that went all over the worktop. Um, but yeah, give them another little. See, as you can see, just adding the liquid, that says we're all down to pretty much what we want. So, let's move this over here, bring up the lids, which I had tongs for that I don't know what I've done with. Okay, where's the tongs gone? I'm not impressed. Ah. Sitting over there. Right. Mm -hmm. oh. Most important part. Most important part. Once you get to this stage, you want to wipe down the rims of the jars with vinegar. Well, I do it with vinegar anyway because that's what I saw on the video. Because you're not going to get a good seal if you've got grease and stuff on the rims. So we have basically vinegar going on. And to the outside and the top. And again the outside and the top. Yeah, I can throw a lot of vinegar when I do this. Because I have the the bit of kitchen roll, like prop or soap and vinegar, because I don't want to take any chances. If you see my very first video, um, you'll see that I completely forgot about this bit. Um, but yeah, so that's that done. And as you can see, look, muckiness. So there was definitely stuff on the rims. So, we shall. Okay, we have one. See, and as far as I understand it, having them in the hot water helps the red stuff get squishy, which helps make a better seal. Mm. That's the last one. Right, so this can all go over here now. Now what we're going to do is get the rims. Now, as I've said before, for anyone who's quite new here, just when I started doing the channel, I broke my wrist. So although it looks like I'm really, really tightening these, trust me, I mean, if Patrick came along, he could tighten them an awful lot more. So these are not getting tightened hugely. Um, just because I don't have the strength in this hand. It looks good, but it's not actually what's happening. So, now, with our four jars, we're going to put them in the big pressure canna. Now, I have hooky things and stuff, so I'm just going to go and... Where'd I be? Oh, yeah. These things. Best things ever invented. Do not be putting your hands in the pressure canner once you've got to this stage. So we are going to put the four jars. Now I have got, I'm just going to actually pop that onto boil again. I have got quite a bit of boiling water in here. You want the boiling water to come up probably to about halfway up the jars, no matter what size the jars are. So because these jars are rather huge, I can put another kettle full of water in. So that is exactly what we're going to do. Now, now we put the lid on. And if you've just got yourself a pressure canner, and I know there's some of you who have, please be aware that the first time I tried to put this lid on, 
Oh my goodness, I, it nearly killed me. It was so tough the first time I put the lid on. And it's still pretty tough. Now, as you can probably see in here now, we have a whole lot of steam coming out of there. This little thing has popped up, so now we put the weight on and we wait until the pressure gauge comes up to the required pressure. Now, for my altitude, it is 11 pounds of pressure for 90 minutes is what I need. So it's just a case now of waiting until that gets up to pressure and then counting off the 90 minutes. I'll see you when we're done. After 90 minutes of over 11 pounds of pressure, we now have Oh, hang on. We now have that we can take the the weight off with no sound and hopefully we can take the lid off as well. There we go. And what I always do is check the water. I've just had a look, it's running clear, so we like that. And then We bring the jars out and what I do is we just pop that down a bit, set them on a cloth so they're not going onto a solid cold surface. Obviously using the tong things because this is exceedingly hot, exceedingly pressurised, etc etc. Just move that one across there a bit, and then this one across there a bit. Right. Right. I really, really like this bit. This bit's very exciting. Look, they are still bubbling. I love that. So they are now going to be left to cool while I make some jam. I will see you later. <laughs> 